It's a trend right now to release a video claiming to know the problem with retro gaming. Usually accompanied by someone pulling a sad face and not playing video games. Well, they're all wrong. I assume. I'm not watching any of that bullshit. But here are the seven real problems with retro gaming, which I hope helps these people if they have any time left after their primary hobbies of whining about how other people have fun and defrauding professional photographers. I know writers who use subtext and they're all cowards. Modern consoles all just use an HDMI cable. I can see about 15 of them from where I'm sitting. They're bloody everywhere. I'm convinced they breed. Anyone who plays video games has more HDMI cables than they can possibly use in three lifetimes. You have to invent new uses for them. Wig, perhaps. Meter long tape measure, maybe. I'm this close to trying to weave 50 of them into a cat bed. But can I find the specific proprietary SCART cable for my Mega Drive 2? Can I bollocks? Modern gaming is easy. You simply buy a disc, bring it home, put it in your console, sign into three online services, read and agree to four separate 1500 word terms and conditions about exactly how many shady people in dark alleys they will sell all your data to, and how you're prepared to waive a huge pile of legal rights that signing a contract can in fact not waive. Then you simply download a 5 gig update for your console, apply it, download the entire sodding 50 gigabyte game you thought was on the disc, and then download the for some reason separate 15 gig day one patch. Pick up the controller, realise the batteries are flat, go looking for new batteries, give up, steal them out of some other device, plug in the controller, sign into or up to at least three online services, all of which have their own separate 1500 word terms and conditions, sit there through an unskippable 5 minute intro and 15 minute initial cutscene, and then after a short 3 hour tutorial about how to look and shoot in a video game, you're playing. What could be simpler? Whereas half the time I get a cart out for the first time in a while, it won't read in the machine because it's dirty, and I have to spend five minutes giving it a quick wipe with some isopropyl before it'll work. No wonder everyone plays new games. It's the same problem as in the 90s, isn't it? Your friend just got a new two-player game like Street Fighter 2 or Micro Machines and invites you round for a completely fair game. You get there, and he pulls out the lovely controller that came with the console in all its beautiful shiny glory. The buttons are perfect. It fits your hand like a glove, and pulling off fireballs is an absolute breeze, even when you're playing Micro Machines. And then he pulls out your controller. Some third-party monstrosity from a poorly named company like Good Game or Not Shit Controller Co. It's got 95 switches for rapid fire modes that do nothing, and a slow-mo function that just pauses the game five times a second. But it's always got buttons that respond one time in 30, and a D-pad that is barely a pad and usually doesn't allow you to select a D. The shitty third-party controller is still a constant, especially in a world where vintage controllers are ever more fragile, and your replacement from AliExpress is made of spit, polish, hope, and Amstrad leaf switches. Thankfully, we don't have the problem of choosing whether to buy a £20 official controller or a £10 third-party controller these days. Instead, consoles will only work with licensed controllers, so you always have a guarantee of D-pad quality. And this kind of assurance only benefits the consumer, as in 2023 you can buy an official controller for only £78. Truly a blessed time. It's simple physics. What shape do you see the world in? If you're lucky enough to have two working eyes, then your vision is considerably wider than it is tall. Who wants to play games in 4-3 with ugly real-world borders either side of the action? No, you want to play games in the aspect ratio the human eye was designed for, 16-9. Modern games are great. There's only one button you need to press and the tutorial tells you what it is. There's easy modes to help you see every last identical brown corridor that the developers slaved over. And if you can't do it, then try as many times as you like. Suspend the game where you like. Save anywhere. You'd have to be a complete idiot to fail. Oh. Whereas there are multiple old games where I cannot get off the first level and in all probability never will. The Big Red Arrow folks listed several. Ghosts and Goblins on C64 for one, but here's mine. Back to the Future 3 on Master System. I assume this game has more levels, but if it doesn't then there's no way I'll ever know.
So like all right-minded people, I'm starting my Saturday watching Bloggo's Pal remember things in groups of four. In the case of this week, it was Game Boy Shooters, an underrepresented category in my Game Boy collection, and a perfect genre of game for a few goes before bed. I fancy the look of Shikuyu Kaihu Gunzaz. I wonder how much it had cost me to get a copy for my original Game Boy in Analog Pocket. Bloody hell. And that's an extreme example. But even on a very benign system like History's Greatest Console with a small library, we've gone from even the worst of games being the very low hundreds, to copies of the merely okay multi-region release of Masters of Combat going for the best part of a thousand actual pounds. For a fighting game on a two-button controller that thought it was a good idea to use one of them to jump. Suddenly, 70 quid for a tedious brown trudge fest feels like a genuine bargain. Old machines are old. If you learn nothing else from this entirely serious video about entirely serious actual problems, then learn that. This means that they're fussy. They fail. They need cleaning as much as the carts. And they have to be treated at least slightly with kid gloves. Even this, my well-kept Game Gear, required the tender loving hands of Lee from More Fun Making It recently, as it was, to use his words, very, very broken. A little surgery to replace the capacitors and clean it all up, and it's probably got another 30 years in it. But it's not something just anyone could do. It's not something I could do. Modern games machines, of course, are entirely bulletproof. They never fail. Certainly, they would never have a massive, yawning, fatal design flaw which only shows itself if you play the machine in the exact same orientation that the manufacturer recommends and went well out of their way to make the much easier choice. For instance...